Okay, this video is going to be about Dubai, and we're going to talk about prince, princesses. And we're going to talk about specifically Sheikh Amara in Dubai and her new husband, uh, Sheikh Mana. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Well, here's the deal, and I have to read this because their names are so difficult. But uh, Sheikh Amara bint Muhammad bin Rashad al Maktoum is the daughter of His Highness Sheikh uh, Muhammad bin Rashad al Maktoum, who's the vice president and prime minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai. And uh, she got married uh, to Sheikh Mana bin Muhammad bin Rashid uh, bin Mana al Maktoum, I think uh, in April. Now, who is Sheikh Mana, her husband? So Sheikh Mana was born in 1989, and Sheikh Mana's parents are Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashad bin Mana al Maktoum and Sheikha Mid, uh, Madi, Madiya bin Ahmad bin Huma al Maktoum. And he, uh, Mana, Sheikh Mana, served in the UAE uh, Armed Forces National Services. He studied security and risk management at the American University in the Emirates. And so this will be their story. Let's see if they're happy and what's going to go on in their life. Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about the Sheikah and the Sheik. Sheikah uh, Mara and Sheikh Mana. Uh, we want to know uh, about the two of them individually first. So I'm going to do just three cards on uh, the Sheikah Mara to see what the cards can tell us uh, about this marriage in just three cards, about her uh, regarding this marriage. And um, so we'll see how that goes. But the one thing that you have to be prepared for is that after that we're going to do the chic mana. But before all of that, let's take just a moment of meditation. Okay, so Shika Mara, what can the cards, in three cards only, tell us about Shika Mara as it relates to this marriage? One, two, three. Shika Mara, what can the cards let us know? First card. Well, this is the moon card. The moon card is indicative of secrets being revealed, and this is a major arcana card. So it's very interesting. So the moon card is telling us that there are secrets that uh, to, to come out. The next card, the five of wands. Wands are actions, plans, a uh, forward movement. Now the five of wands, I want to get, it's more like pointless arguing, pointless, um, dispute okay so this is telling me the secrets were coming out but that this is something that's going to happen it wasn't within the control of mara shikamara and so any of her um disagreement with that didn't matter the final card is the chariot the chariot is a major arcana card and this is indicative of things happening at a rapid pace and i love it that this figure in here has that turban um and that these uh, stallions are facing in opposite directions. So although there might have been some opposition to this happening, maybe so quickly or right now or with this individual person, it was ha coming down quickly. So for Sheikah Mara, uh, secrets being revealed, the Five of Wands, it was, it was pointless to, to argue about it, and the charities that this was going to happen. 
Now for Sheik Mana. Sheik Mana, the groom. Sheik Mana, what can the cards, and just three cards, give us some insight into uh, him uh, and this marriage? What can the cards tell us? Sheik Mana. One, two, and three. Sheik Mana, what can the cards let us know? I love these cards, they're absolutely beautiful. So for Sheik Mana, the first card up. Well, this is the Wheel of Fortune. Um, and for me, this is fortuitous. Now, what we see here in this Wheel of Fortune is these two um, beautiful uh, birds here. Um, I forget the name of these birds. Uh, it'll come to me as soon as I finish the reading. But look at this. They're actually in a love position. So the Wheel of Fortune is that this was a fortunate pairing, even if it may not have been completely uh, these this two cup these these two uh, people's choices or first choices it was a fortunate uh, pairing and we're looking at the chic mana right now the next card up is strength okay this is represented in this card why we see a lion we see a um, a person here uh, holding onto that lion's mane and uh, and this is the back end of the lion here so uh, the strength that this requires uh, to go through with this, to understand the importance uh, of the kingdom and the families, that's what was required here before uh, it was even fortuitous. He understood that this is something that was going to happen and uh, in some way or another. And then the fool is uh, the major arcana. It's just the beginning. It's so appropriate for this because this is the beginning of his journey. So he's taking with him just what he needs and he's off on the journey and he has to trust in the in the wisdom of the parents and uh, the wisdom of uh, uh, God and that this uh, is coming uh, to pass the way it should. Beautiful for, for the sheik mana. Now, we'll do six cards to give us an idea what is going to happen in this marriage between Shika Mara and Sheik Mana. Shika Mara and Sheik Mana. The marriage, how is this going to play out? What can the cards and six cards, which is a dyadic cross, tell us about this marriage? So one, two, three, four, five, and six. What can these six cards, this dyadic cross, tell us about this marriage for Sheik Amara and Sheik Mana? Signifier card, six of cups. Um, cups are emotion, compassion, heartfelt situation. The six of cups is beautiful. So these two little uh, animals here are looking at each other and they're kind of saying they wish things were, when looking back to the past when things were simpler better more their choice but um, and that's the signifier that this couple will be reflective on this marriage and and their past the challenge to that then are the lovers is the lovers card the lovers card is beautiful we show these two beautiful birds their necks almost entwined and um, they're ready to commit to this pairing so this tells me that the challenge to kind of wishing things were the way they were in the past, maybe they both had people that were important to them that they've had to let go, I don't know. But uh, this is telling us that they're fortunate in that the challenge to this is that there is a, a potential for uh, true love here. The basis of this reading then is the world card. This is beginnings and endings. And look at how beautiful this card is displayed. So beginnings and endings, this tells us that something has come full circle and something magnificent is about to start off again. So the basis of this whole thing is in fact their life together. Setting the old life aside and embracing the new life that's begun. Uh, in April, I think it was. The, the past of this reading is this Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is feeling a bit entrapped. And uh, so this card shows us, and it almost looks like a wedding ring here, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. The thing about the Eight of Swords is that the person isn't really entrapped. If they open their eyes, if they uh, squeeze in to let those binds fall loose, they realize there is a path forward. And so the path forward to these two is to commit to the love that's expected of them. In the sky of this reading is the Nine of Wands. And the Nine of Wands, you can see here in this in this figure, it has a, a bandage over his head. He's got a, a, 
a, a saber on his side, a knife on his side. The wands of, of uh, actions, plans, and forward movement are stacked up behind him. This person has come through some obstacles and still has one wand in his hand to push forward. He's felt embattled. Maybe he had some disagreements, but he's now in a position to say, okay, I'm going forward. And then the final outcome for Sheikh Amara and Sheikh Mana, the marriage, is this three of wands long-term plans. Actions, plans, forward movement, that's what wands are. And this is telling us that there are long-term plans for them that will be uh, beneficial to the couple. So it's a beautiful reading. What does it say? It says the Six of Cups is kind of the two of them wanting things to be like they were before this commitment was pushed forward. Uh, the Lover's Card as a challenge tells us, yes, there is love in the future that will help push back these feelings if there were any of regret. The basis of the reading, the World Card, is a beautiful card. It's a wonderful be uh, in an ending of one cycle and a beautiful beginning of another one, which is the marriage. In the past of this was any reservations they may have had, any entrapment they may have had. It's interesting that this even looks like a wedding band, sort of. Uh, that's in the past. In the sky of this, the Nine of Wands is telling us whatever embattlement was felt, um, left, it left them with something of a plan to move forward on. And then the final card with this long-term plans in their future is just telling us that yes, they're looking to the future, they're understanding their place in the marriage of these two families, really. And, uh, and that's what's going to prevail here. And I think that's beautiful. You'll always hear me say it. I hope the cards are right, but listen, it's not the cards that were wrong, it's my interpretation. So let me know what you think. What is your interpretation of the cards? And uh, listen, tell me what you'd like me to read about, and I'll read about that. Hey, I'm gonna show you the cards now. Hang okay, so these cards are, are the, just the latest thing, I believe. So this is by the artist, uh, is Ciolo, Ciolo Thompson, Ciolo Thompson. And it's, this is called the Line Strider Tarot, the Line Strider Tarot. Comes in a great box, and it's, it's got some beautiful imagery on the outside of the box, and a nice little introduction back here. Uh, I like this, is Body, Mind, and Spirit Tarot. So very interesting. But uh, the box itself is one of the cool uh, magnetic snaps. It's beautiful, it's got a nice glossy finish. It really feels uh, like a, a precious uh, stationery would come in here. The book is amazing quality. I mean, I don't. I don't know if you can see it, but like each one of these pages is just, there's really good quality. And the book is full color. And it's interesting here because it talks just a little bit about Solio Thompson. And I'll just tell you very quickly that she's a self-taught visual artist and she lives in the Seattle, Washington area. And um, so this is her first uh, deck. So the first published deck anyway. And then in, over here, she's talking about this was a journey for her, and uh, the Line Strider deck uh, has got a lot of animal uh, imagery, and that it brings in some uh, tarot images from her childhood. Now, she grew up uh, where? She grew up in, she was born in uh, Western Samoa, and then uh, she also uh, lived in Bolivia, and so uh, she has an amazing uh, childhood, and, um, and brought a lot of attention to the cards. So there we go, the book is fantastic. The cards themselves are also pretty amazing but i mean they're a gentle spirit they're a good quality of card you know they're stiff they're uh, slicky but they don't cause a problem they shuffle uh, really well and um, so you know they're just great and then they're very easy to interpret and the reason is that uh, each card really tells you right there what's on the card okay so you don't have to just rely on the imagery but if you really look at what's drawn on there it's pretty amazing i mean and then you start to wonder why did she uh allow, uh, allow this animal for this particular uh, divination so the beautiful cards good suggestions in the book how to um you know use them and i just lay them out like this so you have a chance to look at uh, more than just the few cards that uh, you know reader pulls out when they're doing our shtick and then um you know, maybe um, you might decide uh, you like the cards. If you don't see a lot of cards, I know when I was just watching um, this stuff on uh, YouTube, I wanted to see more cards than I was seeing. So there we go. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So ciao for now.